Welcome back. I have a dream. I have a dream that at night I can actually usefully have my brain functioning. In fact, that dream is true because it's called dreaming. And the man who knows tremendous, I don't know if he knows more about dreaming than anybody else in the world, but he certainly knows a great deal and he knows it in an entertaining fashion, is Robert Moss. He uh, has written a new book called The Secret History of Dreaming. And this is, it is a history of how dreams have influenced folks. But he is also a man who promotes something called active dreaming. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So, Mr. Robert Moss, uh, tell me some examples of how dreams have influenced Well, history. Henry, first of all, it's always a dream to be on the show with oh. you. <laughs> we try to have Robert back as often as possible. He's my ideal guest because I don't have to talk for five minutes. He can do the interview on his own. Hey, this Maestro. book is about how dreams are central to the history of everything. This isn't some fringe New Age flake stuff. For right. example, the presidents as dreamers. Do we know that the second president of the United States, John Adams, not only remembered dreams, used them to shape policy decisions, but swapped dreams on a regular basis with another of the founding fathers, his friend Dr. Benjamin Rush. These guys are writing letters of their dreams back and forth to each other, and one of these dreams, the Dr. Rush, is writing to the second president, Adams, hey, I had a dream in which I'm reading a future history of the United States, and it said on this page that you and Jefferson will be reconciled, that they're falling out, you become great buddies again, and you will die within a short time of each other. Seventeen years later, they died on the same Fourth day. Of Was it the Fourth of July? Fourth of July, very good, oh. 1826. <laughs> Seventeen years ahead of their death on the same day, the doctor, one of the founding fathers, is saying, I dreamed. I read a future history of the United States, and I saw you dying within a few hours of each other. Isn't that amazing? Ha! Ma mere coincidence. Give me another one. Well, you know, any field you like, you name your field. John Lennon was a dreamer. He said, there's a quote from John Lennon in the book about how the best, the best nights are ones you've got to get up in the middle of the night because you've got the song, you got the music, uh, yeah. it's coming to you. So it's central to creativity. How about science? Wolfgang Pauli, mm -hmm. uh, quantum physicist of the 20th century, one of the great towering scientific minds. He said dreams were his secret laboratory where he mm -hmm. got the really good stuff. And if you're doing quantum physics, you need to be dreaming because that stuff doesn't work in the rational w Winston mind. Churchill, this is mainstream stuff. Winston Churchill dreamed his dead father came to him 50 years after his death for an update on world history. What the heck has gone on since I checked out Winston? <laughs> Why are you so plump? <laughs> what are you doing painting pictures in the corner? Yeah. And can I have a cigar? <laughs> and, and, uh, and on a slightly more serious note, but an inspiring note, very relevant note, Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. The Underground Railroad, this woman, brave woman who got all these escaping slaves to freedom before the Civil War, she used her dreams. She would fly like a bird in her dreams. She would see a road she'd never seen with her ordinary eyes, and she would guide escaping slaves to safety by following the maps from her dreams. Wow. That's a story for us about liberation, about seeing the future, and about using the dream information to do better for a whole community. Okay, so how mm -hmm. does one actively dream, which is what your, your whole thesis is here? I made the title up as a provocation initially but now it's become serious in the sense that it is a great game to play and I love playing and teaching people. Now what is active dream? First of all it's getting active about how you approach the dream state. You don't have to go to sleep in order to dream. You can, uh, you can learn to enter a conscious dream state. Maybe it's a light reverie, maybe it's a big journey of the shamanic kind, maybe you go back inside a dream you remember, you'd like to have more of it. You know you're with a goddess in Hawaii and you the dream is interrupted by the alarm clock, you'd like to go back in, you can learn to go back into how do you the dream. Do, how? Well, for example, you have a dream that either excites you or worries you. Mm -hmm. There's some energy there, right? There's some juice. You can learn to put your mind back into the same space you're in in the dream and go on with the dream. You're running away from something. Hey, stop running. Learn to turn around, go back into the space of the dream, confront what is after you, see what it is, see what you need to do. You're having fun, you want to have more fun. Well, relax into the rhythms of the dream, the smell, the sensations. We, our inner senses are alive in our dreams and put yourself back there and go on with it. It's a technique that I teach. It's part of active dreaming. But the other aspect of active dreaming, Henry, is this. We want to be active with our dreams in ordinary life. We want to bring some energy, some magic, some right. possibility. Hey, times are tough. People need more resources and sources, and they need extraordinary resources and sources to get through. One of the things we get from our dreams is we get a chance to scope out and rehearse for the future. 
future. We see challenges and opportunities that lie ahead in our dreams. And if we learn to tap into that information, we can do better. Look how we've done with leaders who cannot do the vision thing. <laughs> do not use extraordinary sources. We've got to go somewhere else. Robert Moss, hmm? uh, it, the, his book now is called The Secret History of Dreaming, but he's written a slew of books, if one can call books a slew, um, about dreaming, which are fascinating. Uh, tonight, you can meet him at 7 p.m. at Book Passage in Corte Madera, January 13th at 7.30 p.m., Reader's Books in Sonoma. You can go to mossdreams.com for more information. If you get a chance to meet him, uh, he's, he's just a great, he's a fun guy, uh, so, and he's got a lot of great information. You're a gentleman well. and a scholar, Henry. It, and it's always, always a, pleasure. a pleasure. And one of the reasons I love having you on is because you always say nice things about me, which